this Bishop Mel. Now we are in the portion of sharing with you the Holy Word of God. Our text tonight came from the book of Philippians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 6, the book of Acts chapter 14, and the book of Psalm 42. The title of the message tonight is The Power of Pursuing the Call. The Power of Pursuing the Call. Let me just open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for this privilege, this opportunity that we can come together once more on this prayer line live tonight, God. We thank you, God, for this precious night of worship that we can give you the glory and the praises, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are being honored, being glorified in this prayer line live, God. Oh, God, by your people, redeemed by your blood and set free from sins. So tonight, God, I pray that you will fill us, Lord, with your spirit to have the knowledge of what you are saying in these last days, God. That your purpose, why we are here on this earth, may be accomplished. In these last days, God, we pray that you will anoint us, give us the wisdom, the strength to live and conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you in all things, God. So, Lord, we pray tonight that we will be filled by your spirit and deep knowledge of your will that we, that we may accomplish your purpose, O oh God. Lord, grant us tonight the strength to live and conduct ourselves in a manner worthy of you, fully pleasing to you and desiring to honor you in all things, God. So, Lord, oh God, I want to lift up to you this prayer line live, God, for sustaining it and establishing it for, for a period of more than almost five years now, God. So we respond to your call every night to lift up every need that comes to this prayer line live, God. So, so, so Lord, tonight send forth your anointing anointing to every intercessor tonight on this prayer line that their fervent prayer will avail much for your glory, for your honor, in Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. The title of the message tonight is The Power of Pursuing the Call. Philippians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 6, Acts chapter 14, and some chapter 42. You know, in the book of uh, Acts chapter 14 verse 19, this is about the taste of blood mingled with street dirt, saturated Paul's senses. Remember Apostle Paul? This time he had been beaten badly. It seemed as though every muscle in his body was locked up in a painful situation. His jaw might have been broken. The stone thrown by the Jewish supporter had reached their mark. So the Apostle Paul was in serious trouble. The book of Acts chapter 14 verse 19. He could not imagine how he, how he looked to Barnabas, his friend, and those who surrounded him. And were trying to move him to upset to a very safe place. So the horror on their faces. He had been stoned and left to die. Thoughts of giving up may have been tempted him, even though he existed in in between in conscious and subconscious state. Apostle Paul knew that yielding to such thoughts would mean defeat. So he must not give up Never give up as long as his lungs could draw a, a, a breath. He must continue for the sake of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, his Savior. So later, in the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, he wrote, This is Apostle Paul who has who have been stoned to death. Let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. So, thus his persistence or pursuing the call of God pay off? This is my question tonight. So the Apostle Paul believed it did. 
When it came to persisting or pursuing the call of God, there was no question. Paul had what it took. So after stoning in Lystria, the word says that he got up in the book of Acts chapter 14, verse 20. After he was stoned, what happened? He got up and entered the city. The next day he went away with, with Barnabas. So Apostle Paul re-entered, remember this, re-entered the city of Lystra, the very place he had been stoned to the point of death. He was persistent. He has the power of pursuing the call of God. God had given him a job to do. Like most of us here on this prayer line, God has a call for our life and he has given us a job to do. Here, Apostle Paul, he was not going to give up. When he encountered difficulty in hardship, there must be something more deep within him that sustained and encouraged him. For the Christian, this is a sustaining power in our life as we pursue the call of God upon our life. So without Christ, remember, directing and strengthening us, we quickly fall into what? Temptation. So here we could see tonight, this very night that uh, that if we entertain the thoughts of giving up or abandoning abandoning the call, we will go into disappointment and depression. So no one enjoys failure, right? Or even disappointment. Who enjoy failure? But the, but Paul did not enjoy. The, even the humiliation he experienced. Remember the suffering, the sacrifices that he went through? He didn't enjoy it. However, he viewed this as an opportunity to identify with Christ. So Pope, Apostle knew that when Jesus was faced with the horror of the cross, he had not given up. Jesus has never given up also when he does the will of the Father. So neither could us, could we give up in the call of God. So the value we place on our call will determine the strength of our persistence or pursuing the call of God. So one of the basic steps to gaining and maintaining a clear sense of persistence is learning how to stay motivated. You must be motivated of your call. Motivation creates the right atmosphere to help us reach our goal. It also provides the hope we need to stay focused no matter how difficult life becomes. Amen? So Paul's life was Motivated by the memory, remember what he experienced, the memory on his way to Damascus Road. It was there that he met the risen Savior and he was commissioned. He has given the call by Jesus for service, for what? In the God's kingdom, in the kingdom of God. So Paul, Apostle Paul has a call, so he has to pursue that call and accomplish it. The book of Psalm, chapter 42, verse 1, remember David? David, he said, as the, as the deer pants for the water, brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. So, my question is, are you hungry to know God? Are you pursuing the call of God upon your life? Is there a passion for him, uh, for him deep within your heart, like David? You know, Apostle Paul was passionate in love for Christ, and this abiding love motivated him when difficulties arise in his life. So in it, 
and it was his abiding love for Christ that kept him firmly on the right path or right course. You know, it's one of us. You and I on this prayer line will face times of failure, okay? Or times of defeat or times of disappointment. But how we handle these times is very crucial to our spiritual growth and development in Christ. So we must realize that even in times of failure, God already has a plan. Has a plan. Part of the plan includes witnessing, being a witness for His love and forgiveness to others. So God may allow us to face disappointment or heartache if it brings us closer to Himself. He also may not prevent all of our suffering, especially if He knows this will sharpen our faith and cause us to rely on Him. So He would allow suffering. He would allow difficulties in order to sharpen your faith. You know, adversity or difficulties connect us to the heart of God. So this is the reason people can reach their goal when adversity grows too intense. They become closer and closer and closer to God. Remember, in time of adversity, you come to God closer because you need His help. Remember Thomas Edison? Thomas Edison who discovered the light bulb that we are using now in every household in the universe, uh, in the world, I mean, if Thomas Edison had become disappointed or discouraged with his quest for electricity involving light bulb, he would have never created the light bulb that we are using now. When we are reading the Bible, even now, as I read my notes, I'm using a light bulb. But instead, Ed Edison pursued the goal, persisted. After many tries, even thousand upon thousand upon thousand of hours in the laboratory, the day came when he flipped the switch and light filled the dark. So he had motivation because he had a passion to accomplish the goal. So perhaps you have experienced a, a defeat. You have experienced failure. Or maybe thoughts of giving up. I want to challenge you tonight not to give up. Pursue the call of God upon your life. God has a plan. God has a purpose for your life. That's why you are here on this earth. You didn't come here to er on this earth just to work, be married, buy houses. No! There's a purpose for you. There's a plan for you. Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He is your source of strength to pursue the goal. And you can do it. Adapt this word as, a, as part of your faith belief system. Don't be tempted to reach a goal or satisfy a desire apart from Christ. Pursue the call. Pursue the goal that God has given you. If you do, you will miss the best part of the Christian life if you stop an opportunity to become intimately involved with God's plan. Give God the opportunity to teach you how to persist and never give up. Continue to pursue the goal. Pursue the call of God. Allow Him the chance to reveal Himself to you daily. It's a daily exercise. So what would persistent or pursuing the goal teaches us tonight? I believe there are maybe five of them. What would 
uh, pursuing the goal of persistence teaches us. Number one, the difference between failure and an event of failure. You know, being stoned does not seem, uh, a fa does seem like a failure or does not seem like a victorious event. However, Apostle Paul gained God's perspective of his situation and recognized the value. In times of defeat, we never, how, we never know how close we are to what? To victory. You never know. Maybe just write one step, you have the victory, but never give up. Number two. What would persistence teach us? That a trial or time of adversity or failure does not mean we are to stop pursuing our call or our goal. Number three, that is, in every event of failure, God has planted already a seed of success. Even before you fail, He already have a plan for you. That's why failure teaches us to what? To pursue, to be persistent and determine about what God has called us for. Number four, bury your failure. Bury it. Six feet under the ground. Bury it. Glean a lesson from them, but don't frame them and hang them on the wall. And keep looking at all your failures in life. Number five, never blame others for your mistake or difficulties. You know, in times of difficulty, we need to ask God to show us what He wants us to learn in times of mistake and failure. That's why if we blame others for what we are experiencing, not only we will miss God's, God's best or lesson, we also miss His blessing. Hallelujah. Now, now, how do we develop a spirit of persistence? Or develop to pursue the call of God? How do you, how do you develop it? Number one, set goals that require your best effort with God. You set goals with God. Don't take him away from you we set goal it should be included in every goal in every dream in every ambition that you have include him number two allow him to develop his desire within your heart what is God desire in your heart what is the will of God in your heart you know it so allow him to develop it in your heart, not you, but God develop it in your heart. Paul did not ask to be a missionary, remember? The thought never even crossed his mind until he met the Savior on his way to Damascus. You know, a desire arose within him to preach the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles. That's why his vision increased as he grow closer and closer and closer to the Lord. Number three, how do we develop a spirit of persistence again? Keep your eyes on Christ or in times of difficulties, in times of problem. Keep your eyes on Him. Fix your eyes on Him. Like, like Peter, while walking on water, his eyes is fixed on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Number four, refuse to listen to criticism. People don't want you to succeed all around you. They want themselves, but not you. That's why refuse to listen to them. Look for a person. Number five, look for a personal lesson in times of defeat. You will learn in time of defeat that that is the stepping stone for victory. Your defeat is your stepping stone to victory. Number six, practice self-control. 
Self-control, that's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Persistent will require, require us to set the focus of our mind on Christ and His call for us. Focus your mind on His call and goal for us. If you want to know your 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 reaching your ask God to confirm this to you through the Word of God. That's why you need the Word of God daily. You just don't read the Word of God on Sunday when you attend the church. It's a daily exercise. Number seven, believe that you can reach your goal through Christ's strength. You can never reach your goal without Christ's strength. Amen? So you may have never set goals or pursue the call of God for your life. Maybe you don't. Because probably thoughts of failure may overwhelm you. That you may never reach the goal. But God has not given up on you. And He will never will. You have a purpose. You have a plan for your life. His love is persistent. Give it up you on you to persist also on the call of God. It is never too late to pursue a goal that God has given you. Therefore, tonight, in my opinion, I want to challenge you to resurrect any past goal that you have failed. Very old thoughts of defeat and failure. Don't hang it on the wall and keep on looking at it. Bury it six feet under the ground and rekindle those. Then take a step forward to achieve the goal. Pursue the goal through Christ's strength. And you will fulfill the will of God in your life. You know, the words give up. It means that you don't want to pursue the, the call of God. In, in other words, you want to give up. Give up can have a tremendous impact on your life. However, God has a solution for every defeat, for every failure that you have if you pursue the call of God upon your life. Remember this statement. I'm going to read it to you. We shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and ocean. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island. Whatever the cost may be, we shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing ground. We shall fight in the field and in the street. We shall fight in the hill. We shall never surrender. Who said this statement? Remember? Anybody know? It was Winston Churchill. They are, ab they are about to be defeated, but Winston Churchill said, never give up. You know, the power of persistence is a mighty force. The power to pursue the goal, the call of God upon your life is a mighty force powerful force we know the end of the story during the time of when the prime minister uh, when minister uh, when winston churchill was the minister of england of england the allied forces joined forces and the war took a dramatic turn toward victory amen to that so tonight Tonight, have you come to the point of no return? Have you lost all your battles in life? Have you been defeated? Have you been a failure all your life? Do you feel as though there is no fight left within you? God is your mighty anchor. He will hold fast to you because you have a purpose in life. God has a plan for you. So you do not lose your footing. However, you must take a step of faith. Pursue the call of God upon your life. Not to give up. Not to give way to 
to feelings of doubt, disbelief, discouragement, even fear. You know, often successful people are people who have faced defeat and failure. Look at the Old Testament. Look at the New Testament. Successful people are people who have faced defeat in their life, failure in their life, discouragement in their life, disappointment in their life, but refuse. Remember that they refuse to give up. They refuse to give in. Why? Why? They have the power to pursue the call of God upon their life. You have a call of God upon your life tonight. Remember. Pursue it. There's power. So as we think about success from God's perspective, we must realize that there will be times when we experience disappointment and even failure. So how does this not mean to be uh, that we are, but this does not mean that we are defeated. You know, as you seek to reach the call of God or your goal, number one, realize that failure does not, is temporary and does not mean you should quit. Number two, in every failure, God plants a seed of success already even before you fail. Number three, glean wisdom from all your failure. Don't bury, don't bury that memory of failure. Uh, bury that memory of failures. Number four, never blame others for your lack of success. So, how do you become uh, powerful in pursuing your call? Set your goal now, this very night to God's plan for your life. Keep your spiritual focus set on Him, on Him alone. Believing that you can do all things through Christ who is strengthening you. In Jesus' name, Amen. This is the end of our sharing tonight. Let me just close up in prayer. Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, it is your light, Lord that shines within, within us, Lord, and brings glory to the Father. Let be a light shining in us, Lord, in this darkened world, God, that may other people glorify you, God, when they see the light of Jesus in us as we persist, as we pursue the call of God upon our lives. Father, glorify your name through our life now, O God. May others see your power and glory reflected in us, even as we fail, God, in our life. We know that we, that we have been bought with a price, God. Therefore, we desire to glorify you in our lives, God. Like what Apostle Paul did. He never gave up, even if he was, he was stoned to death. When others behold gold words in our life, may, may they glorify you. We recognize responsibility to honor and glorify you for all the things you called us for. Glory to God, Lord, in the highest. So Lord, tonight teach us your way, O Lord. We will walk in your truth. Unite our heart to fear your name. We will praise you, O Lord, for the rest of our life. We offer you praise. We offer you glory, God, tonight. We praise you and adore you with all our heart, Lord, for what you have given us and for the call of our life to accomplish the purpose and plan for each and every person here on this prayer line. May we be found worthy, worthy of your high calling, Lord. And fulfill all the good pleasure of your goodness, God. May we serve you in faith and in power so that your name will be glorified in our lives, God. According to the call you have, you have imparted to us. To continue to persist. To continue to pursue the call that you have given us. And we give you praise. We give you glory tonight. 
in Jesus, in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Bishop Mel, for that word. Uh, once again, the title of the message tonight is The Power of Pursuing the Call. A scripture reading Good evening, from Rita. Good evening, Rita. Philippians 4, Galatians 6, verse 17, Acts 14, verses 19 to 20, and also Psalm 42, verse 1. Hallelujah. We are now in the portion of...